Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Dishonored. Um, today I will be doing a slightly different video because as I said in my Dark Souls video that game was mostly about the separate encounters but Dishonored is more about the overall layout and level design. Uh, I'll just start by running this short video here and as you can see most of the game uh, well, you can't see most of the game, but the part you can see here is um, there's a big central area, uh, mostly for realism purposes, I suppose, even in a game, where most of the enemies move. And then to get around the enemies, because this is a sneaky game after all, uh, you will have to be moving either on the uh, high parts here, as the one I'm running on, uh, it has spiky bits, so you'll have to use your blink. Um, yeah, I just cut a bit out there. Then there is the low parts on the sides. And then in the middle there are these trains, which you can both hide on top of and underneath. And as you can see here, uh, first of all, the, uh, the level became lower. Uh, basically, they put a ceiling below or over the top of the train that you have to go below. And then they also put a gate in, as well as two enemies looking straight at the gate. Um, what this does is basically it forces you to wait, uh, because the enemies here have to move out of the way. There is no way to sneak past them. And the fence here makes it impossible to blink past as well. So if I move into Photoshop here, I just bring up the uh, the general image and again I draw with some sort of pink I suppose so you have the central design in the middle here the basic layout then you add the uh, the side parts I'll just choose another color for this something like this. so down here is a separate area there is actually a doorway uh, through the stairs here as well I don't know if it's visible, probably not. Um, so you have the side area. Over here you have the pillars that you can blink across. You have the balcony as well as the balcony over here. You have the lamp posts that you can stand on top of. I don't know about this one, but let's assume. Uh, you have pillars on the other side. You have a low ground on the other side. You have these hedges that protect you from uh, vision. You can basically crouch behind them. You can hide below the trains here. And then you have the uh, the entrance at the end there. I'll just draw this thing. This is where you have to go through. As far as I know, there is no other way past this thing than to uh, go through the wall of light. So first of all, start with the middle one. Then you add the paths to the sides as well as the cover in the middle. And then at the end you add the enemies themselves because the enemies and their movement is basically what makes the game a dynamic sort of game and not just a puzzle game that has one selected way to go for everyone. So you have a dude up here, have a couple dudes up here, and in that way, I'll make that point later. So in my second example here. Uh, again, you have these sort of really wide open area where you're able to move. So this is the basic layout, I suppose. Then you have the big hideout thingies in the middle. Boom, boom, boom. I'll just do this really quickly because you probably get the point. So you have a lot of different covers and then you also have the the exit to the next area, which is through this small door here. Uh, again, I'm not super sure about this, but I don't think that it's possible to get through the grates at the end here. And then finally you have the enemies. So the general design of most of the areas is actually fairly simple. Sure, you have a few areas that stick out and the um, the uh, artistic side is basically what makes the areas different because if you just use the 
um, the actual collision boxes for all these things the things would actually be really simple and it's just the um, the enemies that make the game interesting uh, there are two types of challenges there is uh, pattern recognition which basically means that you have to figure out how to advance and then there is execution which is actually doing it and doing it in the right order um, I'll be getting more to uh, to the difficulty later um, again another example the last example was the part right behind the uh, the fence here at the end um, it might be possible to get over it because there are lampposts but they're really high up so I don't know where you actually get through is in the bottom here again a really small gate there are a couple of enemies in this room at least one I think the other patrols um, I've only played through the game twice so I'm not super uh, super knowledgeable about the areas but again it's a really big really simple design um, there are a couple of ways through the fences here I think there is at least one in the middle where the stair is going up uh, then you have the top part over here which I think you can jump over like from the lamp up there just like I jumped from a lamp to get up to where I'm observing you have your basic sort of cover and you have your uh, enemies um, the number of enemies is quite important but the uh, the patterns with with which they move are actually more important because an enemy that has a really short cycle uh, until he gets back to the original starting point is much easier to predict than someone who has a longer starting point and if you have a few different enemies patrolling through the same area with different cycles um, or different times on their cycles it means that they are going to combine into different patterns every time or yeah I mean depending on the time some if you do it twice as fast every other cycle is going to be the same um, but again most of the areas are actually fairly uh, easy in their base layout and then you just add stuff on to make it more complex with cover and enemies uh, the most uh, complex designs are actually the multi-level ones uh, this one which is the golden cat and then there is um, I don't remember what it's called uh, the pub uh, the dog something uh, whatever uh, so this one is actually more complex it's a kinda weird shape it has stairs going up it has a doorway here which you can go through you can go through here and here here um, I think there is at least one uh, possession gate basically where you have to be a rat to get through uh, and I think there is a window in the top here that you can go through as well but I'm not again not a hundred percent sure about that so there's one guy down here I know there are a couple guys uh, below the stairs that you're supposed to run into to get a bit of uh, ambience and backstory and there's this guy up here um, just inside the door there are a couple of people talking the owner of the place and the guard or something uh, but again most of the layout is actually pretty simple uh, they get away with this because you're only ever supposed to get to this uh, wellness basically uh, the area in the beginning here you actually come through here quite a lot like three times at least maybe more um, yeah so here is the gate um, what we have here is the two guys they are watching each other as well as the uh, the gate which you can't pass so this is basically what Dishonored does to provide ambience, a backstory and also a couple of hints about how to get across sometimes you hear people talking about uh, like in the Golden Cat where the two brothers are um, here is the thing you can interact with uh, but the thing with people talking to each other is that they overlap their uh, awareness uh, cones or whatever you want to call them so what this does is that it forces you to 
first wait for the dialogue to play out and then you also have to learn their patterns once they start moving because um, as far as I know in every case when people start moving or when they stop talking they have different patterns um, I don't think there is any point in the game where two people will constantly face each other so that you, you can't backstab uh, either one of them um, so this is what I call gating it basically means you have to wait uh, because even if you take out the electric field you will have to wait for the enemies to move away and providing only this one area to get through the game like there you, can, you can't go over the rooftops I don't know if you can possess something but maybe um, so what this does is that it slows the game down and it makes you sort of sneakier because you can't really speed run through the entire game um, if you want to when you're going to the golden cat which I'm doing here uh, you can actually just rip out the uh, the whale oil tank, throw it on the ground, and then just blink up and reach the door because nothing will follow you through the door anyway. Um, so yeah, here's another example. Again, basic layout like this, um, something like this as well. Uh, you're basically forced to go down from your um, your high ground here. You can be on this roof as well. Uh, here is the roof and I'm standing on some air pipes or something up here. Uh, so what you have here is enemies and given that the uh, enemies, at least apart from the assassin enemies, they won't really follow you up to the high ground or they will never ever spawn on a rooftop for instance. Um, so all of the enemies are pretty harmless as long as you're on the high ground. So what the game does is it designs uh, things like this as well as the the gate here to force you to get down to lower levels where enemies are a bigger threat basically so instead of just having the find the sneakiest route um, to get to the next area you're forced to interact with the enemies and in the last example I have here of the general layouts again you have a really simple main path you have enemies at the bottom here and this is one of very few cases where there is actually an enemy above here he patrols but he's standing and looking out the window here um, I really haven't done much experiments on how much he sees but he's also standing in a windowed hut so you can't blink in and just kill him uh, you either have to go around through the doorway here Whoops or you have to go around the sneaky wheels on the right or on the left side um, yeah but again more complexity means that the enemies are a bigger threat to you on higher levels and you're forced to move down um, to the lower levels um, for my next examples here uh, I have again uh, this is uh, inside the golden cat yeah, it's called the Golden Cat. I just had to make a double take there. Um, again, you have like this. It's basically two people looking in opposite directions. You have a patrolling guy here. You have these patrolling. Um, this girl here is mostly standing still, I think. I didn't really worry much about her. But to get around this room, which in theory can have some pretty advanced patterns, what you have is the big circular thing at the top here which again allows you to as long as you ignore or not ignore but you hide from the characters moving around you still have a safe ground in the middle here and the safe ground is again it's something that reduces complexity because if you're able to move down take one enemy out uh, hide him away somewhere and then get back to safe ground without uh, let's say without this guy here um, finding you then you're able to get back up you can identify the new pattern and it both uh, or once you start solving the uh, what to do and in what order the execution becomes easier and easier for every cycle and every body that you manage to hide basically so this is one way to reduce difficulty you can still have a really advanced pattern outside but as long as you have a high ground or a really dark place or something to hide below um, you can cut down on really complex patterns just by 
allowing the player to pause between fights. Um, so this is in the pub and this is actually one of the trickier areas in the game in my opinion at least both because as long as you or as soon as you aggro one of the guards there are likely to be four or five that are actually running towards you and secondly because it has several levels and the guards will be patrolling up and down these stairs here and there are more levels of stairs below you which means that the pattern becomes three-dimensional um, so you both have to watch out for things above you and things below you and things patrolling on the level you're on um, so the pattern recognition becomes harder because you also can't really see uh, more than one level up and one level down so in a house that has four levels or five or whatever um, the pattern becomes more difficult um, yeah and then there is also the execution because if enemies are patrolling and you can't really figure out their patrolling um, routes you can't find good places to hide or to dump corpses or knocked out people either so it becomes more of a race in time let's say you know that you have a room that only one guy goes into and you know that you have one minute to take out three guys and put them in that room before he comes back for instance then you really have to be sharp on your execution uh, because you know the pattern you know what you're gonna do you just have to do it in the allotted time um, again sure dishonored it's not such a tricky game the difficulty if you ramp it up it's mostly about how much damage you take and you're not really supposed to be taking damage because if you play it as a game in which you constantly fight enemies you're probably not gonna get such a good experience I've tried it once doing the super ninja don't fight anyone tactic and once with the combat and I really think it's better as a sneaky sneaky game even though the blink and the seeing through walls thing uh, dark vision or whatever it makes it a little easier than it maybe it should have been um, it's still a pretty cool game. I picked it up for like 20 bucks. Um, finally, I'm going to, or until I move into UDK anyway, I'm just going to mention this. Uh, it's my pet peeve basically, and it's the dark vision. I really don't know why they would take such a gorgeous game. It has excellent lighting and really cool models, and then you just turn it into a brown shitty game like all of the Call of Duty and etc just because you will mostly be using the dark vision I did anyway it's just such a helpful thing I really don't understand why they wouldn't just overlay these things over the regular thingy um, I'd really prefer that it's just an opinion you may disagree um, so in the next example here I will actually be moving into UDK and I will show you um, the basic layout uh, or how I would approach making a map for something like Dishonored so as you can see here what I have is just your basic straight square layout um, I have an upper portion here these aren't really in the game much um, I just included it because I thought it looked cool if you wanted to you could just make the sort of gates at the bottom here and pretend that this is all filled in and move on with your own design then I have some stairs along with these sort of blocky areas that make up the ground uh, I have some windows here I have a back alley here and then you have your right turn so it's basically just a left turn right turn with some stairs in the middle and a high ground I started doing some uh, work on the insides here but then I basically removed it um, so if I open the next one here, uh, stage 2, what I've done here is I've added both a sort of cover thing in the middle, I've added some cover uh, behind here, uh, the fence thingies that you saw me on the first image, or saw me point out on the first image. I have the sort of gates below the stairs, uh, pretend like this is a house and this is another house, etc. I have some things going on the walls to this super sneaky area. 
So if you just go through here, you can put a sort of rune or whatever in here. Uh, and then you have the back alley leading into a really dark place for some reason. I didn't put a light in here. But yeah, you can put some sneaky stuff in here as well, or just some money or whatever. Um, the basic layout of most Dishonored maps is that the areas where you don't have to go is the areas where pickups spawn, or spawn, they just exist. And then I also have this sort of electric fence here, because you don't want your player to take the most obvious route through the map, because finding the roads is basically what the game gameplay is all about. I also added like this little rat uh, infestation path here. Um, you, since that the infest or I don't remember what it's called, um, yeah, take over. It's a pretty core mechanic in the game. Like it's one of your upgradable skills, so you want the player to be able to use them in several different areas. I've also done it so that you can get up. Oops. Okay. I didn't in this version. Um, the next version will have it. But you, you can get up to the next area and then you can basically jump out the window and get past the electric fence here. So this is stage two. Uh, basically adding side routes and adding cover, basically. So the last stage I have here, stage three. Yay! You can see the inside of the house. I've actually got ramps up to the path that goes across. I've got some more cover. Uh, let's imagine these are some sort of things you can hide below. And when you see as I move into the game... Whoa! Um, wait a minute. Play in... Uh, play in game. Play in editor. Play in viewport. There you have it. Whoops. Never mind. I'll just play from here and then I'll drag it into the video, I suppose. So, as you can see here, I've actually done these short sort of um, matinee sequences where the... Uh, I don't know what they are, actually. They're in the UDK editor, anyway. So, as you can see here, I have the enemies moving around. If you wanted to, you could actually parent a dynamic... Uh, trigger boxes to them so that if they get too close to the player they can kill you so you can basically create a sort of sneaky game inside the editor if you just wanted to um, yeah so I have the player you can see this guy is basically looking at the things inside the whatever it is and then moving over looking a bit and then moving back this guy moves back and forth or all the way around, I don't really remember which. Um, up here you have two guys that meet and basically provide these sort of crossing over uh, visions, uh, which means that you can't kill them when they're looking at each other on the uh, on the bridge, but you can kill him when he's over here. Then you have uh, another guy who keeps watch over the middle guy, and then when you finally get here, you have one guy looking over there, one guy making sure that you don't fall down while uh, stealing whatever I said was up in that room. And then you have two guys just gating at the end to make um, provide some sort of instructions about the next area. Sure, this is really quick and easy. I just did this in like an hour. So it's not anything super complex. It's just something I thought would be pretty cool to watch. Um, so this is my example of how to design for a game like Dishonored. And I hope you liked it, and thanks for watching.